Okay, this is an illustration of uh, YouTube um, for schools and uh, how easy it is to implement on the uh, latest um, release of ClearOS. So I've got um, VirtualBox running on this PC and I've got two um, virtual machines running, a ClearOS beta test. So this is running ClearOS 6.6 .6 beta 2, as you can see there, and this is acting as a gateway for this virtual machine here, which isn't connected to my home network, it's connected to this machine here. So it's sitting the other side of this ClearOS um, machine with its firewall content filter and YouTube for Skills now enabled. So um, I'm running um, Elementary OS here, which is a uh, Linux distribution, which is really nice and clean and easy to use and set up. And I'd uh, recommend you have a play with it if you've never tried it. So. Um, this is the ClearOS 6.6 .6 machine, um, and this is its web interface, which I can browse to on its um, external IP address. And uh, within the gateway settings, you've got the normal web proxy setup. Uh, I've got it set up as to be in transparent mode, so there's no end user configuration required at all. Um, and you notice that now you've got YouTube for Schools um, enabled here. Um, so if you click on Edit, you'll get the option to enable or disable it and you paste in your YouTube um, edu ID there. Um, to get the edu ID you need to sign up for YouTube for schools with a um, an account. It can actually be any account you use to do this but um, a Google Apps account is probably a good idea and one that um, is centrally managed by somebody. Um, and you'll find that once you've uh, signed up um, you've sorted it out you'll have this sort of page here that tells you how to use it um, and the key that you want is that string there okay and most content filters and firewall settings will allow you to just paste that key in now just like that and click on enable and it's set up um, there's a couple of caveats to this whole thing is that once that's set up by default everybody on your inside your network will get YouTube for Education, not the regular version of YouTube, and I'll show you what it looks like in a second. Um, you can bypass that for given users by putting in their YouTube username into the box at the top here and clicking on Add. Now that needs to be a YouTube username, not their email address, not their Google Plus profile name, or anything like that. It has to be a YouTube username. And the big problem with YouTube for Skills at the moment is that you don't get a YouTube username anymore. Um, so if a member of staff sets up a, uh, a YouTube account now, we've got Google Plus enabled, it just links to Google Plus and it's all done via Google Plus, there is no discrete username. Now there are ways to get a username and one of them is by creating a, um, a, a, a specific URL for your YouTube channel and that will include a username. However, that used to be easy to do, now it isn't because you need to have 500 followers before you can do that. Um, so that's a bit of a problem for the vast majority of people who don't have 500 followers. So uh, the YouTube username bit is a bit of a problem. If somebody created a YouTube account a year or two ago before the two were tied together, then it's not a problem, but you would have to ask them for what their YouTube username is. It's not as simple as putting in their email address. So this is a major stumbling block for YouTube um, for schools at the moment. Basically, for us, it makes it unusable because I need a way of adding all the staff to this. And at the moment, there simply isn't a way of doing that easily. And at the moment, I don't think there's even a way of doing it. For some of them, I could do it, but the vast majority, I couldn't. The account that I'm signed into here you can create um, playlists um, and you can put whatever videos you want into those playlists and your users will be able to watch those playlists however they won't be able to watch those playlists until you publicize those playlists somewhere so you'll need to create a Google site or some other site which has got links to those um, uh, playlists and uh, then they'll be able to watch them so you could create a playlist for every subject perhaps and teachers could say well okay I'd like this video in the playlist and so on and you could just keep adding videos to those playlists 
um, as long as you want and create as many playlists as you want but you do need to have some sort of portal some sort of Google site which has got all of those playlists there that people can browse because they won't see those playlists by default when they sign in which the instructions um, down here about setting seeing additional resources kind of imply they will they won't okay so there's some rather major caveats associated with this but just to show you what it looks like here's the elementary OS virtual machine fired up um, I'm signed in in this instance of Chrome here so um, I get regular YouTube okay this is because I block certain ads um, and this account is not signed in with any user so it's just somebody browsing on a computer and if I click on YouTube here you'll see that we get YouTube for education and uh, they can't do anything about that they can't go on I don't know videos that aren't categorized as YouTube for education so you'll find TED talks and scientific things and um, all sorts of really useful videos in here as opposed to watching all sorts of uh, slightly less or more inappropriate um, content but there will be a lot of things which are not in there that you might want people to watch which is why creating playlists and allowing people to bypass this if they're a member of staff is quite important but that's the difference between YouTube for education and YouTube just default YouTube okay so it is easy to configure it's not easy to allow people to bypass which is I think a major problem but I believe there is some moves to uh, sort that out looking at a few forums so we shall see what happens in the, the coming few months